Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the idea of terraforming Mars. Although, to be more specific, we're only talking about one part. We're talking about the potential production of Martian magnetosphere, which can allow Mars to eventually have atmosphere and of course liquid water. And that's because without a magnetosphere, Mars is always going to remain the same. It's always going to stay a somewhat uninhabitable desert. And so today we're going to be discussing this idea of potentially finding a way to produce Martian magnetosphere, focusing on this one study that proposes a very interesting way of doing this without wasting too many resources. But let's start with the magnetosphere itself and why exactly we need it on Mars. With the answer itself being really simple, the solar wind. The solar wind unfortunately strips the Mars of any possibility to have any atmosphere and of course liquid water. And so without having something to protect the planet from all of the solar wind coming from the sun, unfortunately Mars can never be habitable even if we try really 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 hard. And all of the solar wind even creates some really interesting effects on the surface of Mars, something we've explored in some of the previous videos. And in case you're wondering how we know all of this, it's actually from a single mission by NASA known as MAVEN, an orbiter that's been orbiting Mars for a very very long time, collecting a lot of data. And that's of course in contrast with planet Earth, where the magnetosphere is relatively strong and can easily shield the planet from a lot of different effects from various types of charged particles. Which today we know is absolutely crucial for the survival of complex life on the surface and of course for the stability of the planetary biosphere. But obviously the magnetosphere here is only one of the first initial steps needed for Mars to be habitable at some point. Naturally, there are a lot of other problems we're facing in order to successfully terraform this planet. But you can learn more about all of these steps and all of these problems by watching one of these brilliant videos from PBS and Dr. Matt O'Todd that you can see somewhere right here, or watching one of my previous videos which are probably not as high quality as this. Anyway, so the problems are there, but how do we solve these problems? And more specifically, how do we solve the problem of the magnetosphere? Now there have been several propositions and a lot of them are sort of more or less physically possible, but they would be tremendously difficult to achieve simply because of the costs and the materials required. For example, one of the concepts we've discussed a few years ago was originally proposed by NASA's Jim Green, with the proposition being some sort of an extremely powerful magnetic shield placed in one of the Lagrange points of Mars. You might remember that the Lagrange points are these relatively stable gravitational points around pretty much most of the planets where you can technically place a satellite and it will stay there for a very long time, with L1 point being the one between the Sun and planet Mars. And so in theory this would produce a very powerful magnetotail which can then sort of shield Mars from a lot of potential radiation coming from the Sun. But the problem with this proposition is really twofold. One is that we would require an extremely powerful generator with really really large amounts of energy that's currently beyond our capability and it would all have to be in a relatively small space. It would also be extremely expensive and very difficult to deliver all of this to that particular orbital point around Mars. And at the same time, every few years you would have to adjust the orbit of this object in order to prevent it from falling or from flying away. So definitely quite a lot of challenges. The other proposition would be a little bit similar to what Elon Musk proposed a few years ago, nuking Mars. Or to be more specific, nuking the internal part of Mars. And all of this would be done in order to try to restart the internal dynamo of Mars, basically to restart the mechanism responsible for producing the magnetosphere. But there are so many problems with this. First of all, we barely understand how this works on Earth. We have no idea if this is actually how the magnetosphere is produced. It's sort of assumed to be produced this way, but nobody is really certain. Second of all, it would require thousands and thousands of nuclear weapons. Third of all, how do you even deliver them so deep into the Martian ground? And so the idea here is, well, it's interesting, it's very Elon Muskish, but not really practical. And also will probably not do anything, to be honest. A much more sound proposition from a few different studies is a creation of a kind of a belt across the equator of Mars that would essentially be various different power stations that would create a kind of an electromagnetic belt around the planet itself. It would be approximately 21,000 kilometers in length and would basically be a belt producing the electromagnetic field around the planet. It doesn't have to be too strong, but because of the 
just sheer size of the actual belt produced and the number of stations here, it would still be a really difficult project to achieve at this point. And simply because of the scale of this project, this would probably require decades if not hundreds of years to produce. Even here on planet Earth, we would still require a lot of manpower to achieve something like this. But something like this is definitely a lot more feasible than, for example, nuking Mars. Then we have this new paper from a completely new study that was released only a few days ago that makes an even better suggestion, at least to some extent. And this proposition goes into a little bit more detail about the production of magnetic fields in general. Here, to produce a magnetic field, all you really need is a flow of electromagnetic particles. For example, charged protons, electrons, muons, and so on. And even though it technically can be within the planet, like on planet Earth, it can also obviously be around the planet. But instead of creating something extremely powerful in a single point around Mars, or creating a very, very long chain of electromagnetic substations along approximately 21,000 kilometers of Martian surface, how about we just build one single one somewhere above Mars where things are already in motion, specifically the moon of Mars, or one of its moons, Phobos, mostly because it's much closer. And by itself, Phobos is already a really interesting object. First of all, it orbits Mars every 8 hours. Second of all, because of the lower gravity, it would be much easier to move things to and from this object than from the surface of Mars. So building something here would in theory be a little bit easier. Third of all, it contains a lot of natural materials that can be used to produce a very effective magnetosphere by essentially producing charged protons. And in this case, here is sort of how all of this would work. So instead of having a central dynamo inside the planet, we could essentially create a kind of a continuous loop that will be created by discrete stations which would be represented by sudden influx of various charged particles, in essence produced by the sudden emissions from the surface of Phobos. This would obviously require some sort of a relatively powerful station, and specifically the scientist in this paper proposes 50 different stations of approximately 2 gigawatt in power, which in comparison is very similar to a smaller nuclear power station, or about one-tenth of the power of some of the larger hydro stations. And all of this would then form a kind of a plasma torus. A torus produced by these discrete emissions of plasma that are created by ionizing some of the materials on the surface of the moon Phobos. And in this case, for every single orbit for about 8 hours of operation, approximately 15 kilograms of material will be used from the surface of Phobos, which means that you can technically use this for billions and billions of years. Assuming, of course, we find a way to produce enough electricity. And all of the calculations in the paper suggest that this would produce just enough energy and just enough magnetic field to completely protect the entire planet from pretty much most of the dangers of the solar wind. Forming a perfect artificial magnetic field, strong enough and also efficient enough to last for a pretty long time. And of all possible locations explored in the paper, of all the possible locations on Mars, inside Mars or around Mars, putting something on Phobos seems to be the most efficient proposition so far. But this would obviously require a continuous operation without any issues, and it would also have to produce quite a lot of energy at all times. So there are obviously some problems here. One of the biggest problems is not even in regards to energy, it's actually in regards to gravity. How do you keep something on Phobos and prevent it from either flying away or from being separated from Phobos and pulled toward Mars? In other words, the tidal effects from Mars might be a little bit too disruptive. On the other hand, the other problem that's not really addressed in the paper is in regards to the current effects from the solar particles from the solar wind on the surface of Phobos. As the solar wind strikes Phobos, it actually unfortunately creates a lot of electrical effects already. Specifically, it ends up ionizing parts of Phobos and creates a huge amount of static electricity. This could potentially be a serious problem for any electronics operating on the surface of this moon. And then of course there is still a problem of delivering all of this to the surface of Phobos. It's a lot less materials than some of the other propositions, but it's still a lot of materials. We're talking about basically 50 nuclear power plants and something to also somehow extract the materials from the surface of Phobos and then somehow put it into those power plants in order to electrocharge all of this material. Nevertheless, compared to every single solution everyone else proposed, these solenoid loops so far 
represent the best possible resolution to how we can potentially produce artificial magnetosphere on the surface of Mars, which can also one day maybe protect planet Earth if suddenly our magnetic field decides to flip as well. We could potentially produce these by placing something on the surface of the planet to produce these loops as well. But this is something we'll discuss in some of the other videos. And in terms of the materials, one of the propositions here is using the so-called nanotubes. Generally speaking, carbon nanotubes are actually extremely light and so they will be relatively easy to deliver, but they do require a lot more power. Nevertheless, this would actually produce a lot of electromagnetic power and thus produce a lot of protection for Mars. And so definitely a really interesting proposition. But I sort of had two questions when I finished reading this. First of all, this right here already produces some electromagnetic power. Does it already have some sort of an effect on Mars that we are currently not aware of? Maybe it's already producing certain types of magnetosphere that could be already there, but hasn't really been measured. And the second question is, well, similar effects are also observed on our own moon. Does our moon also produce some kind of a magnetic field that we've never really considered before? All of this would be extremely interesting to learn about simply because of the potential applications in some of the future missions and for some other practical purposes when we start settling on various objects in the solar system. Although I guess for now, nobody really knows. It hasn't really been measured yet. But I guess until we finally land on Phobos and collect some of the samples here and learn a little bit more about its surface and a lot about what's happening on the surface here, we're not going to be able to plan this mission any further. And this type of a mission is already planned for the next few years by the Japanese Space Agency. Mars Moon Exploration, or MMX as it's known, is planned to launch sometime in 2024 and is planning to collect some of the samples from the surface of Phobos and is most likely going to do a lot of other analysis of this beautiful moon. And so upon the completion of this mission, we'll probably come back and talk a little bit more about some of the new discoveries in regards to the moon and in regards to this proposition of building something on the surface of Phobos, or if it's basically even possible. And so until we learn more or until someone else proposes something else even more intriguing, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that actually has Mars as its logo, all of which you can find in the description below. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.